שבועות, שבועות, זמן מתן תורתנו, שבועות, שבועות, חג הביכורים. Now is the time of the harvest, now is the time we must bring our first fruits to the temple. And together we'll sing Shavuot, Shavuot Zman matan toratenu Shavuot, Shavuot Chag habikurim Chag habikurim Shabbat Shalom everyone! I'm Rabbi Barry Silver, and on behalf of Congregation Lador Vador, it is my great pleasure to welcome you to our celebration of Shabbat and of the holiday Shavuot. You know, a man was once walking down the street, and he saw someone coming towards him, and he says, Sir, could you tell me, does the sun rise in the east or in the west? The man said, I don't know. I'm not from around here. As the story indicates, and as man doesn't know, there are certain physical laws, certain cosmological constants that apply the same to everyone. Humans have wondered for a long time, are there also certain ethical, moral precepts which apply universally to all people? Many people hold up the Ten Commandments as such a prescription for how to live our life. Others say, no, no, this is too parochial. This only applies to Judeo-Christian communities. It doesn't apply to everyone. Well, tonight we're going to explore the Ten Commandments, where they come from, their origin, and whether they are universal in scope. To accomplish this, I'm so grateful to our sponsor, Sheila and Marty Winston, who are celebrating the graduation from high school and the soon-to-be entering into college of three granddaughters, Sydney Cohen, Alexandria Cohen, and Zoe Denmark. We also are indebted to Eleanor and Howard Bernstein, who will be leading us in the candle lighting, just as Sheila and Marty Winston will be leading us in the Kiddush. And now, let the celebration of Shabbat and Shavuot and the Ten Commandments begin. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. As the Shabbat and Yom Tov candles give light to all who behold them, so may we, by our lives, give light to all who behold us. As their brightness reminds us of the generations of Israel who have kindled light, so may we, in our own day, be among those who kindle light. Boruch Hacha Adonoi Eloheinu Melech Olam Asher Kiddushanu B'Mitzvotov B'Zivanu Lahadlik Ner Shel Shabbat V'Shel Yom Tov. May we be blessed with joy. May we be blessed with light. May we be blessed with peace. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat may, Shalom. May everyone go with good health and be safe. Good evening. Kiddush means the sanctification in a way for Jews to proclaim the uniqueness of Shabbat. Reciting or hearing the Shabbat Kiddush is an obligation so that we can fulfill the need to remember Shabbat. Just as honey is used on Rosh Hashanah to symbolize a sweet new year, Sweet wine has long been used to make Shabbat just a little bit sweeter. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech olam ore peri haguffin. We are blessed to have three beautiful granddaughters, all who are graduating high school, with a plus 4.0 grade point average and are going on to start a new chapter in their life at college just outside of Orlando. We wish everyone a Shabbat Shalom 
and stay safe. And we look forward to the time we can all be together in a new sanctuary to celebrate Shabbat. Each morning when we wake up, we have a choice. We can either say, boy, or we can say, wow. How blessed we are to wake up each day and how blessed we are as Jews, whether we've come to Judaism by the accident of birth or later in life after ascertaining its worth. Whenever we pray, whenever we enter the sanctuary, we sing how good, how good, how blessed we are to be part of this faith family, to be part of the eternal, never-ending story of the Jewish people. Matovu, how good. Matovu, oh halecha Yaakov, oh halecha Yaakov. Mishkenotecha Yisrael Matovu Ohalecha Yaakov Ohalecha Yaakov Mishkenotecha Yisrael Ba'ani Abo I don't know about you, but many people think that America the Beautiful is the greatest national anthem of all, even surpassing the Star Spangled Banner. Perhaps because the Star Spangled Banner celebrates a victory in war, and America the Beautiful celebrates the beauty of nature and how America is made great by wondrous natural bounty and the natural beauty that we see around us. In a similar way, I would like to suggest that the most beautiful prayers that we have are the prayers that celebrate nature, not that celebrate victories or nationality, but the beauty of nature. One of those prayers was created by cantorial soloist Jennifer Werbe, a beautiful rendition of Baruch Hu. Baruch Hu gives praise to the creative power of the universe, and when it's joined together with works of nature, it's a beauty to behold. We also have the Shema, the Ahavta, and the other traditional prayers that we will now be celebrating Shabbat with. So enjoy the beautiful prayers and wonderful video to accompany these prayers from our tradition.
Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad 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 Baruch Shem Kivod, Shem Kivod, Malachuto Le'olam Bo'ed Baruch Shem Kivod, Shem Kivod, Malachuto Le'olam Bo'ed Ve'ahavtaha et Adonai Elohecha בכל לבבך ובכל נפשך ובכל מאודיך והיו הדברים האלה אשר אנוכי מצבך היום על לבביך ושיננתם לבניך ודיברת בם בשבתך בביתך ובלכתך בדרך ושוך בך ובקומך וקשרתם לעוד על ידיך והיו לתותפות בין עיניך וכתבתם על מזוזות ביתך ובישריך למען תזכרו ועשיתם את כל מצוותי ואיתם קדושים לאלוהיכם אני אדוני אלוהיכם אשר הוצאתי אתכם מארץ מצרים להיות לכם לאלוהים אני אדוני אלוהיכם אדוני אלוהיכם אמת ברוך אתה אדוני אלוהינו ואלוהי אבותינו ואמותינו אלוהי אברהם אלוהי יצחק ואלוהי יעקב אלוהי שרה אלוהי רבקה אלוהי רחל ואלוהי לאה האל הגדול הגיבור והנורא אל עליון גומל חסדים טובים וקונה הכל וזוכר חסדי אבות ואימהות ומביא גאולה לבני בניהם למען שמו ואהבה מלך עוזר ומושיע ומגן ברוך אתה אדוני מגן אברהם ועזרה צרה
We have now come to the part of our Shabbat celebration where we enter into silent meditation. Shavuot was one of the three pilgrim festivals. There was Pesach or Passover, Shavuot and Sukkot. Pesach was the planting in spring, Shavuot is the first harvest, and because Israel is a tropical climate, Sukkot is the second harvest. So this Shavuot, we celebrate the first harvest. Most of us don't have gardens, although it wouldn't be a bad idea if we did. Most of us are not farmers, although our country depends on farming for our food. But we still can celebrate the harvest festival. In what way can we do that if we don't have a farm? Each one of us has planted seeds. If we have children, then we have ingrained into them certain ideals and precepts, which hopefully we'll, we will see the fruition of as Sheila and Marty Winston see their granddaughters graduating from high school, taking advantage of the knowledge and education imparted upon them through past generations, grandparents to parents to children. If we spend a lot of time practicing a sport, we can see the benefit of the fruits of the harvest by seeing how well we are and how accomplished we are. Perhaps we've passed that on to our children and grandchildren. If we've accomplished things scholastically or in business or in social action or in the accumulation of good deeds, these are all bountiful harvests. Let us spend now a few moments of silent meditation to count our blessings the harvest that we have to enjoy from what we have sown. And let us also think of the future. What could we be doing right now to plant seeds of growth so that we can continue to enjoy beautiful harvests in the future? Tora, 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 Ziva Lanu Moshe. Tora, 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 Ziva Lanu Moshe. Mora Shaki Ila Yaakov. Mora Shaki Ila Yaakov. Mora Shaki Ila Yaakov. Tora, Ziva Lanu Moshe. Tora, 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 Tiva Lanu Moshe. Tora, 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 Tiva Lanu Moshe. In our Torah reading this Shabbat, we read from the very beginning 
of the book of Numbers, in Hebrew known as Bamidbar. This passage always precedes the holiday of Shavuot and has a connection to Shavuot. Baruch Hu et Adonai HaMavarach Baruch Adonai HaMavarach Lo'olam Vahed Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Bachar Bana Mikol HaAmim Venatan Lano Et Torato Baruch Atah Adonai Noten HaTorah a loose, modern, updated translation of this blessing gives thanks for the fact that our people, our ancestors, chose to adopt a moral code, which today we know as the Torah and is also featuring the Ten Commandments. We give thanks for their decision to choose to be moral people, and we stand on their shoulders as today we read from the Book of Numbers and we seek to interpret in modern ways the Ten Commandments. And God seemed to speak to Moses in the desert, the wilderness of Sinai. At the tent of meeting, on the first day of the second month, in the second year after the exodus from Egypt. As follows, Take a census of all the children of Israel according to their families, according to the house of their fathers. And count all the males over the age of 20 from their father's tribes. Israel, all who are able to serve in Israel's military forces. Tifkedu otam letzvotam, and keep track of them, count them, and number them, so that we can know what type of or how many people we have in these armed forces. Atav ahon veitachem yihiyu ish ish lemita ish rosh mebet avotav. You and Aaron. And one person, one delegate, one designate from every single tribe of Israel, who the Elishemot Anashim, and these are the names of the people. They then proceed to tell the names of the twelve tribes and the designated representative from each tribe. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam. Ashel Natan Lanu Turat Emet, the Chaeula Mata Bitochenu, Baruch Atadonai, Noten Hatorah. Amen. The pandemic has brought about great misery and suffering. We have paid heavily with many human lives that have been lost, with illness, with economic devastation, people losing their jobs and their livelihoods, their income students not being able to attend schools and not being able to engage in social activities and athletic events, religious institutions being devastated. However, there is a group called Light of the Nations, and they are providing a light in this darkness. We've been able to reach out through the pandemic to people throughout the land that we never would have met before, and I've had the great privilege of speaking with and meeting Bruce David, and he has launched so many wonderful music videos that he was kind enough to share with us at no charge. And now I'd like to share with you Bruce David and Oren Reynolds' holistic version of the Ten Commandments. The mysterious force referred to in many languages and religions as God is the ultimate source of life. The existence of this mystical presence unites us with everyone and everything else. Everything that we are currently aware of exists as a result of this energy force. The One is called by many names. 
Don't be led astray by those who claim to speak for the source of life if their teachings lead you away from what you understand to be the truth. Don't say or do things in the name of the life source if your actions will have an avoidable negative impact on other life forms. Respect the connection that we have with all who share our precious life gift. Take this day each week to relax, rest, and celebrate life. Enjoy the freedom that comes from not being slaves to our lives. Use this time to reconnect with the most significant and meaningful parts of who we are. Celebrating Shabbat and festivals will revitalize our life connection. It is essential to develop an understanding of where we come from if we ever hope to gain the truth of our existence. Each generation's life task is to progress to a more advanced level by making the world an improved place for our having been there. Don't destroy life needlessly. We all depend on other life forms to survive. Try to elevate whatever life forms we take by using their gift to sustain our existence in ways that will positively benefit our life growth process. Adultery is a form of toxic contamination for soulmates. Once it occurs, the trust of a relationship has been tainted and it will be difficult to ever achieve the same degree of connection. Stealing is taking something that doesn't belong to us. Don't steal the dignity of other life forms to live and be healthy by placing your own greed, lust, and desires before the essential needs of others. Be honest with yourself and others if you want to acquire a more enlightened state of being, one that pursues truth. Don't put selfish desires above the life needs of others. Learn to be happy and thankful for all the gifts you have been given. Always try to make a place, a time-space dimension of life, better by you having been there. This is the way to determine your life's true value and worth. The Ten Commandments are as vital to us now as they were to the people who lived thousands of years ago. They are meant to assist us in achieving a time of peace. Let there be healing for all in need. Bless all life with Our Torah reading this Shabbat are the opening verses of Balmidabar, meaning in the wilderness in Hebrew. It's also known in English as the Book of Numbers. Balmidabar always precedes Shavuot, which commemorates the Ten Commandments. What is the connection between the wilderness and the Ten Commandments? Perhaps it's meant to indicate to us that ethics and morality applies everywhere, even in the wilderness. We also see that when we separate ourselves from the cacophony of the civilized world and go out into nature and the wilderness, 
we get a glimpse of a numinous and see the power that transcends our own feeble power and makes us realize that we are part of a greater whole. You know, in this passage, they take a census, but they don't challenge it. They don't count over and over until they get the results they want. There's no cyber ninjas. The Jews accepted the census, and the Jews wanted to be part of the census, because you'd have to be out of your census to not want to be included in the Jewish census, because to be a Jew means to be part of the light to the nations and a people with a purpose and a mission, an exciting mission, to try to improve humanity. You know, in a feudal society, they have a title called a count, like Count Dracula, and the counts get to vote. Every count votes. But in democracy, every vote counts. And that's our way of being part of the census. Sadly, some people don't take advantage of it. They neglect the fact that we have freedom. And the greatest role in the United States, even higher than the president, is the citizen, someone who casts his vote. We also live, sadly, in a feudal society, meaning that we're in a feud with each other. The two parties, different factions. We must overcome this feud. How? By learning to speak and dialogue and discuss things with people with whom we disagree. Cross party lines, religious lines, and factionalism so that we can bring people together. In Hebrew, to say, to take a census means tisaya tahosh, means to lift up your head. To lift up your head, that means you must use reason as your guide. And it also means you must stick your neck out. We Jews have never hesitated to stick our necks out in order to defend the defenseless, and to stand up to tyranny. If we're a Democrat, we shouldn't just go along with the program, whatever our party does. We should stick our neck out, if necessary, to say, you know, you need to support Israel more strongly and stand up to terrorism. If we're a Republican, we need to stick out our neck in order to say that we should not be following after a demagogue who tried to take over the country with an insurrection. Rather, we should follow the lead of Cheney, follow her Cheney of command because she is one who speaks up and speaks for truth and is a, has the ability to stick her neck out. We should also do that in the case of Israel. Now, if you want to say, what is going on in Israel? What is the cause of this? 99% of the cause of this is the fact that the Palestinians elected a group called Hamas, which in Hebrew means violence, which has in its charter excerpts from the protocols of the elders of Zion that says vile lies about the Jews that were used by the Nazis to turn people against us. Hamas doesn't only want to eliminate Israel. They want to kill all the Jews, and they celebrate killers and butchers and murderers. It's impossible to make peace with such peace people. So don't ever say or suggest that I draw any moral equivalence between Hamas and the others and any others. They are the reason why there is violence. However, it does not help the situation when you have Jewish settlers who think that God wrote the Torah in which God commands Moses and Joshua to engage in acts of genocide to kill every person who's not following their God in the Holy Land. And thus you see settlers doing things that are very unsettling, going around and saying, kill the Arabs and trying to take more land. This is not something that we should condone. We should stick out our neck and criticize our own people at the same time recognizing that the main reason for violence in the Middle East is Hamas and Palestinian intransigence. You know, the Jewish people are celebrated by all nations of the world for bringing about a moral code. But if we believe that that moral code was written by God, then it can never be changed. Just like Greeks brought us democracy, but we don't practice democracy as they did because thousands of years ago, their view of democracy was it was just for men and they condoned slavery. It wasn't for everybody. Similarly, in Judaism, the Ten Commandments has to be allowed to grow and has to be allowed to develop. There's no greater way to stunt human growth, no better way to retard human development or to halt any type of progress than to say, my book was written by God. It's infallible. It can't be changed. The Ten Commandments are perfect. There's nothing wrong with it. As long as we do that, we can never grow. 
Let us take pride in the fact that we brought morality to the world and that we're continuing to improve and innovate, just as we do for this Shabbat celebration. I have written my own version of 10, in modern day parlance, suggestions. I invite you to write your own version and to critique mine. Let's have a discussion about if these were written today, what would they be? Here are mine. One, a wondrous creative process throughout the cosmos constantly transforms what is into what could be, transcending all, uniting all, and within all, including you. Number two, do not take this creative power in vain or minimize its potential to transform your life in magnificent ways if you are open to the creative power within you. Three, do not worship lesser powers such as money, fame, popularity, nation, religion, holy books, or man-made gods. Four, honor Father Time and Mother Earth, the source of all life, the best evidence of a power greater than ourselves, and the manifestation of daily miracles. Five, engage in moments of contemplation and quiet reflection of the natural world, the cosmos, and the sanctity of life, and give Earth a chance to rest. Six, do not attack, assault, or destroy others financially, emotionally, or physically, and protect yourself and other sentient beings from harm and aggression. Seven, do not take what is yours, what is not yours, or seek credit for the work of others. Seek to limit human population through family planning to provide sufficient resources on Earth for humans and fellow life forms with whom we share this planet who also have the right to live. Eight, be open-minded in dialogue with those of different views. Base your beliefs on evidence, reason, and science, not wishful thinking, authority, or holy books. Nine, don't adulterate the truth or lie to gain advantage over others. Speak truth to power, even if it takes you out of your comfort zone, and inspire others to do so as well. Consider, number 10, consider future generations, not just your own immediate needs, and leave the world better than you found it. My friends, on this Shavuot, when we commemorate the giving of a moral code, I hope that we will recognize the Jewish moral obligation to be the light to the nations. There are not many of us, and we have a very important job to do, especially in this world of darkness. Therefore, I urge you, be part of the census of the Jewish people. Be counted. Join a synagogue. Participate in synagogue life. Join with the Jewish people. Speak out. Stick your neck out. And be willing to take a stand. Join with our people so that we can help lead the world out of the darkness of the pandemic of ignorance and tolerance and of aggression and instead be part of creating a new world of love and harmony, which we'll accomplish by using the vaccine of Jewish values and Jewish ideals. Shabbat Shalom and Chag Sameach. Sim shalom, tova ubracha, ve'il ruach ha-sefer ha-amim, aleinu, yakon Yisrael, amecha, amecha. Kiviod panecha, natata lanu, adonai eroheinu.
עלינו לשבח לדון הכל, לתת גדולה ליוצר בראשית, שלא עסנג כי אי ארצות, ולא שמענו כי משפחות האדמה, שלא שם חלקנו כהם, וגהור עלינו ככל המונם, ואנחנו קוראים ומשתחווים ומודים לפני מלך מלכי המלכים הקדוש ברוך הוא. ונאמר, והיה אדוני למלך על כל הארץ ביום ההוא, ביום ההוא, יהיה אדוני אחד ושמו. Ushemo, Ushemo, Echad. On this Shabbat and Shavuot, we now read the Kaddish. As we read the Kaddish, we remember those who have died recently and also those who have passed away at this time. Therefore, of course, we think of those who have perished in the conflict now in Israel and in Gaza. We hope for a speedy end to that conflict, which will happen as soon as Hamas and the Palestinians recognize that their path to a greater future is not to destroy Israel, but to learn from Israel and to imitate its democracy and its freedom and its progressive values and ideals that come straight out of Judaism. When we read the Kaddish, many people often wonder, what does Kaddish mean? Kaddish, in Hebrew, Kaddish, is related to the word Kiddush, or Kiddush. It's related to Kiddushim, and it means sanctification. We sanctify or make holy the lives of our dear ones. You see, primitive creatures prior to humanity were able to remember things dimly. They had an awareness of things that went before. They might even have been able to remember their own parents or loved ones, even after they passed away. But humans have reached a level where we can not only remember, which is yiskor or yisker, but we can also be inspired by the teachings and the values and the love, the nobility of our loved ones. So what, is, what does it mean to read Kaddish and to recite it at yisker? It means to remember and to make holy our loved ones by allowing their nobility and their strength of character and their ideals to live on through us and to continue in this world to bring blessings. In that vein, let us remember with love and joy the lives of our cherished ones as we read the Kaddish. Yiskedal v'yiskedash shemei rabah v'yalma divrach rusei v'yamlich malchusei בחייכון ויומכון, ובחיי דכל בייס ישראל, ועגלה בזמן כחי ואמרו אמן. יהי שמי רבה מבורך לעולם ומי אומיה, יספורך ויסתבך, ויספואר ויסחומה ויסנעשה, ויסדר ויסעלה ויסעלל שמי דקדשה ברכו. לאלום אינקו ברכסה ושירסה, תוש בכסה ונחמסה, דם יכון ויומה ואמרו אמן. יהי שלום הרבה מן שמיה וחיים, עלינו ועל כל ישראל ואמרו אמן. עושה שלום ואמרו מיו, ויעשה שלום עלינו ועל כל ישראל ואמרו אמן. May the source of peace and comfort bring peace and comfort to all who mourn, and bring peace and comfort to the Middle East and to Israel, and allow these people our, our people in Israel and the Palestinians to learn to get along in peace. And may we also say Amen. Shabbat Shalom and Happy Shavuot. 
I'm Sharon Leibovitz and Lador Vador and I thank you for being a part of our Shabbat and Shavuot celebration today. We truly appreciate you. We hope that you are enjoying our service and we'll share it with others who may also enjoy what Lador Vador has to offer. Lador Vador is building what we like to call the Judaism of tomorrow today. It's based on rational thought, reason, intellect, and logic. Our Judaism and services are engaging, expanding, evolving, and exhilarating. And we welcome one and all to experience and enjoy what we have to offer. Feel free to learn more about Lador Vador on our website, LadorVador.org, our Facebook page, and by viewing some of the many videos we have on our Congregation Lador Vador YouTube channel. We hope you will and will continue to be a part of our Lador Vador family and programming. We have some exciting announcements for you. Next Friday, May 21st, we'll have our first in-person Shabbat evening service together in over 14 months. It will be held at the Little Theater of the St. Lucia's Community High School on Lawrence Road in Lantana, Florida at 7 p.m. And we're very excited to offer this and hope that you will attend. We'll have social distancing and we'll require all to wear masks, please. So hope to see you there and celebrate Shabbat with us together. On Tuesday, May 18th at 7 p.m., we offer you to participate in our weekly opportunity to hear and speak with two rabbis, Rabbi Barry Silver and our guest Orthodox educator and Rabbi Zvi Khan. We dig into the upcoming Torah portion and usually discuss other current events and topics of interest. Don't miss this great opportunity for learning. On Wednesday, May 19th at 7 p.m., our monthly Rabbi Sam Silver Controversial Issues Series will provide a candidate forum for those seeking to fill the United States House of Representatives seat of the late Alcee Hastings. Both the May 18th and May 19th programs are offered on Zoom. We hope you'll choose to join us later this evening at 8 p.m. for our Zoom and Schmooze Oneg Shabbat when we continue to celebrate Shabbat and Shavuot face to face together. We'll also show a very interesting video from Israel. We hope to see you there. We wish you all good health, a wonderful holiday of Shavuot, Shabbat Shalom, and good yantif with lots of love and kisses from Lador Vador. My friends, we live in a very troubled time right now. This Shabbat celebration was recorded in advance, so I do not know the latest developments in the sad struggle and conflict in Israel. But I do know that already too many lives have been lost. Too many dreams have been dashed. And too many people have succumbed to hate and intolerance. I therefore ask that we have another moment of silence at this time for all of the casualties in that conflict before the final benediction. And now our final benediction. May you be blessed with good health and with good cheer. May the light of love shine upon you always. May you be lifted up, may you be counted, may you be part of the census of Israel, part of this great people with a noble heritage, so that you can continue the ongoing effort, the millennial long effort of our people to make this world a better place. And may we, after this moment of silence for our loved ones in Israel, do everything we can to heal the wounds that exist between us and others, our people and others. And may we do all we can in order to use religion to build bridges of understanding and to knock down walls of separation. I thank you for listening to this Shabbat celebration and joyous celebration of 
Shavuot. I hope to see you soon. We will be in our own place. We will be in a Shabbat celebration indoors on Friday night, this next Friday night. I hope you can join us. We also have wonderful discussions, which would be even better with your participation. I hope to see you in the future. I hope that this Shabbat celebration brings some solace and some uplift during this pandemic, which soon is coming to an end. And I hope to give you a hug physically before too long. And until then, I offer you a spiritual hug. I hope we can share this spiritual hug, which stands for humanity's unending goodness. Shabbat Shalom and Chag Sameach from Congregation Lador Vador. Shut up.
ארץ תחול עין אב, והשמש לה כדבש וחלב. ארץ בה נולדנו, ארץ בה נחיה, ונשב בה יהיה מה שיהיה. ארץ שנאהב, אילן Thank <laughs> you.